Welcome to Hope Natural Health, the podcast inspiring you to be your best version. Join me, your host, Dr. Erin, naturopathic doctor, dog mom, cancer survivor, and girl boss weekly as we discuss all things health, hormones, and happiness with a little side of this thing called life. Welcome back to the Hope Natural Health Podcast, where I try to get you healthy the right way. Last week, we talked about three reasons why you should track your cycle, and I talked about my new period productivity planner, so go back and take a listen to that one. This week, I'm going to switch it up and talk about stubborn belly fat. So are your love handles driving you nuts? You're doing all the crunches and it's just not helping? You're searching on Amazon for that new pair of Spanx? This is what you need to know about stubborn belly fat. It might be a sign of insulin resistance. So insulin resistance is something that happens when we have a miscommunication between insulin and glucose in the body. I'm pretty sure I've spoken about this before, but this is a good reminder about how this can contribute to the stubborn belly fat. So when we eat food, our body breaks down this food, and this is called glucose, or the sugar that we get from whatever we ate now goes into our bloodstream, and it's there to give our cells energy that they need. So this is how we, how we get energy from our food. So insulin is the hormone that's secreted by our pancreas, more specifically our beta cells, that tell these cells to accept the delivery of this fuel, otherwise known as glucose. So what happens is when we have insulin resistance, this signal really gets thrown off. This happens when insulin signals that the fuel is coming, but our cells don't accept the glucose. So what does this mean? Well, insulin remains in our bloodstream now, and eventually our body turns it into fat. It becomes this crazy, vicious cycle, and our pancreas can really keep up for only so long, and then it's going to wear out. So the most common sign of insulin resistance that I see is those pesky love handles or that stubborn belly fat. So the fastest way that we can reduce insulin resistance or make it go away is to do a little bit of intermittent fasting. I have a whole podcast on intermittent fasting and talk about this again. But as women, we only really want to do intermittent fasting maybe two or three times a week. And the the reason is, is because it's super inflammatory for our body. So really less is more in this situation and not taxing or stressing out our body as you know, as minimal as possible, but still to have a really good effect at reducing that insulin. So other symptoms of stubborn belly fat or insulin resistance could be fatigue. You might have some acne. You're really craving sugar and carbs. This is a big one. And a lot of women crave sugar and carbs. You get that hangry feeling where you need to eat now. That's very, very much a sign of poor insulin control. Your scalp hair, hair might be thinning. You might have some brain fog, and then you're also retaining fluid. Also, insulin resistance can be a sign of some hormone imbalances, such as PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, or even I see insulin resistance happen a lot in menopause because estrogen helps us balance insulin as well. And when estrogen drops, we have more signs of insulin resistance because we don't have that hormone to help control insulin. So... This is why we need to test and not guess. And insulin isn't a hormone that's typically tested a lot on traditional medical labs. I don't see patients come to me with an insulin test. It's something that I always usually add because I don't see it. They test hemoglobin A1C, they test fasting glucose, but insulin is a component that's oftentimes missed. So if you have this stubborn belly fat, you've been working out at the gym, you're doing your sit-ups, you're eating right, that's another big one, and you're still not seeing this, you're, you're gaining this weight in your abdomen area, it might be insulin resistance or you know, a component related to hormone imbalance. So this is why, again, we test and we don't guess. So make sure you ask your doctor the next time you go in for your routine labs to have this insulin, a fasting insulin test completed. Thank you all for joining this week, and I look forward to seeing you again next week. Thank you.